What's up, y'all? Welcome and welcome back to Jay's Journey to Nails. And today I'm doing a uh, quote unquote custom color. Um, my aunt told me she wanted to have like this shimmery white um, nail. So I took a little bit of Glam and Glitz Milky White and added some of the, I don't know the name of that, but it's from the ColourPop collection. So I mixed those two together and got this pretty shimmery white color. Okay, so now I'm just going to swatch it just so you all can see how it looks. And then we'll get into the set. Alright, so first things first, you want to push back those cuticles and reveal any new growth um, that your client may have. And you're just going to do it gently. You don't have to apply that much pressure. Just push them back enough to show the new growth basically. Next I'm gonna file her natural nails just to give it get it all even. And then I'm going to go in with my 180 grit sanding band and uh, remove the shine from her natural nail as well. And in this time I'm filing using my e-file. Um, you can see that I start from the right, move over towards the cuticle area, and then into the left part of the nail, and then file the body of the nail. So from right to left, and then the body. And I'm just going to repeat these steps on all of her fingers, of course. <laughs> and when you are using this specific bit, um, I'm going to recommend that you use it at the lowest. I mean, it doesn't have to be the lowest setting, but please do not use this on a high setting because it will burn. It will burn your client's finger. And even if you put a little pressure, even if you have it on a low setting and you add in pressure to it, you do not want to do that because it will burn. And I know this from experience. I've done it on myself. <laughs> so please just use it very gently and at a low setting and once again it doesn't have to be at the lowest but just make sure it's not too high to where it's burning your your client's nails and damaging their uh, natural nails and i was using mine at either 3000 rpm or five so i just i don't go any higher than five rpms when using this drill bit Okay, so now I've applied the nail tips and I got these tips off of Amazon. They are, um, I just went on there and searched for short nail tips and these are very convenient. You don't have to cut them unless your client wants them shorter. So it cuts down a lot of time. So what I'm doing here is just filing it. She wanted them square. So I'm just filing the nails and then I'm going to file on top of it where the nail tip meets the natural nail that way you won't be able to basically see it through the acrylic because sometimes especially if you do a clear set you can see where the nail tip meets the natural nail and to avoid that you just file on top of it and blend it into each other and right there I, I guess the um the nail came up a little bit so I had to add some more glue but I'm just gonna um, repeat these steps on all of her nails
Okay, this next step is a step you do not want to miss ever. So I'm just adding my Mia Secret dehydrator and then following up with the primer. And what these both do is basically dehydrate the nails. So our nails naturally are oily, some oilier than others. And if you get, um, if you have oil on your nails or water or anything like that, these products basically dries it out, dries out the nail. And that way the acrylic can adhere to the nail and actually stay on for a long amount of time. All right, so now it's time for application. I did already start on one pinky, but I didn't like how translucent it looked. So I went in and added some Mia Secret White to the mixture I had. And it gave this perfect um, white with the shimmer to it. So um, what I do now is I add my first bead of acrylic where the nail tip the nail tip meets the natural nail and then i move on to the next so i lay my first bead move on to the next that way i know for sure when i go back to um those nails the acrylic is dry and i won't have to worry about it being lumpy so once again i just apply my first bead where the tip meets the natural nail and then i come back and add my second bead or third if needed Now I'm going back to apply the second bead, which is um, the cuticle bead for most of the nails. So when doing the um, cuticle bead, you don't want to place it directly on the cuticle. You want to place it a little bit further up. And once with the right consistency, you let it sit and you are able to maneuver it into the cuticle area without getting any acrylic on the skin. So you liquid and then you dip it into the powder, dry, dry it off some, and then apply it a little bit above the cuticle area, maneuver it into the cuticle area, and then just brush the rest down um, gently. <laughs> Just always remember if you happen to get any acrylic on the skin make sure you wipe it off because once it dries it can be painful so just please try your best not to get it on the skin if you do hurry up and try to remove it <laughs> Now, on her thumbs, I did go ahead and use three beads. Um, you, it's not a specific amount of beads that you have to use or that you're required to use per finger. Just use what you think is necessary, whatever will help you out in the long run. So, when you hear people saying, oh, do the one bead method or three bead methods, I say do whichever one is more convenient for you. Use that method. So here I'm doing three beads and when I'm doing colored acrylic 
I don't focus on building an apex or the structure of the nail just yet. I just focus on getting the coverage, the color um, all over the nail first because I'm going to go back and encapsulate it and clear. And that's where you'll see me building the apex and getting the structure together. And here I'm just filling in where I need to, where I feel like um, it's missing a little bit of color.
now that the colored acrylic is applied, I'm just going to go in with my Mia Secret Clear Acrylic and encapsulate it. So here, um, usually when I'm capping and clear, I can get that done in one bead, one to two, one to two beads. And um, I don't know, I guess it's just a different consistency of the clear acrylic, but I place my bead. You know, like I'm doing a cuticle bead and then just hold a finger down and let gravity do its work and pull it down. And if I need to fill in some more to build an apex, I um, go in and do so. And if I need to fill in where any lumps are, I fill in for that as well. So, um, once again, I usually do my clear encapsulation, depending on the length of the nail, in one bead. Now here you'll see me going in and feeling, literally feeling on the top, on the um, tip of the nails, just to see if it's flimsy. This is my way of checking to see if I need to add more acrylic towards the tip of the nail because you do want it to have a certain amount of thickness, and you don't want it to where it'll just be flexible. So um, I did go in and add some where needed. I do want to apologize for the appearance of my wig. You'll see it popping in and popping out. <laughs> so I apologize. I was just so into it. <laughs>
right, so that completes the application process. And now I'm just going to reshape the nail with my 80-80 grit hand file. So you'll see me start on um, the side walls and then work my way to the free edge and then file on top of the nail. And you can see that when I start filing, I do file at an angle and kind of get like underneath the nail on the sidewall. If that, if that makes sense, I'm sorry if it sounds kind of crazy, but I do it that way. That way that the, um, the, basically that the sidewalls would be crisp because sometimes I know starting out when I first started filing, I would just file just straight up and down and I wasn't getting underneath basically underneath the nail so it was still like kind of what can i say it was kind of like lumpy underneath the nail like it wasn't crisp it wasn't like a smooth surface underneath the nail so to avoid that i started filing like underneath it at an angle instead of just straight up and down i hope that makes sense oh my god i can make stuff sound so difficult but I hope you can see what I'm talking about versus, you know, I know it sounds crazy. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> and I might um, do a separate video just explaining that part of how I file. Because I just know that probably went over some people's heads because I make simple things sound so difficult. So please accept my apologies. <laughs> to pull out the e-file and I'm just using my ceramic drill bit to um, make sure that the cuticles are sealed and to get any acrylic off of the skin and you want to be very very careful when doing this because you don't want to hurt anybody you don't want to cut your client so um, I start off like I did with the first bit the, like how I did with the sander band um, I start on the right side of the nail and then move my weight to the left side and towards the body of the nail and then I rotate it and go from right to from left to right And with filing, I want you to kind of pay attention to the placement of my pinky. Make sure you use your pinky because that is your stability. If you do not use it, your file will be all over the place. So just make sure you use your pinky to your advantage. That's the foundation. That's your, your rock. Okay, use your pinky. That way it could um, help you have more control of your um, 
your e-file. And even when polishing the nails, your pinky helps out so much, you don't even realize it. Like, I'm just not realizing it um, looking back on the video. So I just thought I'd throw that little tip out there. Hopefully it helps. All right, so now I'm going in with this, uh, I call it a cuticle bit, and it helps so much to get the tough spots around the nail to make sure that everything is sealed to perfection. So I do recommend getting this drill bit. Um, I got mine off of Amazon, and it helps so much with sealing the cuticles. And it allows you to get as close to the skin as you need to get, but it does not hurt. You do not feel it. Um, and I know this because I've done it on myself. So definitely recommend getting this uh, drill bit, especially if you have trouble with uh, filing around the cuticle area. It is so helpful. Okay, so this is how I um, touch up the shape at the end when I get done with all the main fouling. I just have her turn her hand around towards me that way I can see and make sure that the um, shape is it, like everything is even.
just gonna buff on top of the nail to remove any scratches that may appear after I've done all of that filing. And now I'm going to apply a, top, a layer of top coat, a gel top coat to her nails and then cure them for 60 seconds. And now my pinky go again. Remember, y'all need that pinky for stability, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> So her nails are cured and I'm just adding in this cute little cuticle oil I got off of Amazon. Look, I'm Amazon queen. <laughs> so everything you see, I got off of Amazon and I'm just going to um, rub it in and then we're going to check out the look. And here's how they came out. You can see the shimmer a little bit. I should have added more, but they still are so cute. I'm so proud of this set as well. And I do thank y'all so much for tuning in. Those who did continue to ride it out with me. And um, stay tuned for what's to come. I'm on Instagram at Jay's Journey to Nails and TikTok at JJ2Nails. Stay tuned, y'all. It's getting good. Bye.